Welcome to the Wellness Surge Podcast with Dr. Adiola Oke. Each week we discuss our wellness journey with real people like you and me. We have conversations about food, fitness, mental health, financial wellness, and much more so you can get back to the real you. To make sure that you're up to date with this and other wellness topics, visit wellnesssurge.com. Information presented here is for educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose or treat any disease. Please do not apply any of the information presented here without first speaking with your primary care provider. Now let's head on to the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Wellness Search Podcast. Today, I have with me Asisat Ashagbe. And Asisat Ashagbe is a dual certified family nurse practitioner and a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner. She has over 14 years experience in the nursing field, going from like hospital to long-term care, hospice, and all that. But since 2016, she has worked in the mental health and substance abuse field in underserved populations. All right, so that's a big deal right there. Ultimate goal is to improve knowledge and facilitate a better outcomes around mental health issues within minority groups, especially the African Black communities. Asisa, say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. All right. Well, we are so glad to have you here. Thank you for coming. Thank you for your time. Uh All right. Since you've been doing this for like, you've got a couple of years under your belt right now. So what would you say the statistics of substance abuse among the youth is currently? Well, um, currently the rate seems to be going up within um, substance use within adolescents and young adults. I've worked in different facilities surrounding um, problems with um, mental health and substance use. Um, You see that the numbers are increasing. The statistics by the CDC saying about two thirds of high school students, by the time they finish high school, they would have used at least alcohol. About half, I mean, I think that's for actually, yes, alcohol for two thirds of 12th grader and for about half of high school students by the time they graduate have tried marijuana. So that's pretty a big deal. What? You're talking half of high school students? Yeah, half. Approximately half. I guesstimated to have used at least uh, marijuana by the time they graduate the 12th grade. Oh my god, I'm just leaving my mouth is that (laughs) that's that's that's, those statistics are um, astonishing. Gosh. That's by the CDC, so it's something that's a big problem, and I'm sure it's going to continue to rise as you see, like kids not having good coping mechanisms, and just you know, parenting poor. Just a lot of factors are affecting this, and more accessibility to these things with teenagers. And, and think, you- yeah, sorry, I was going to say, I think that's a big deal right now, especially in the. COVID-19 era where kids don't have too much to do, right? They don't have schools. Some, they don't, they don't even have like sporting activities that give them the high, that give them the, that they use up their energy. So they're just going to be relaxing and doing stuff, right? Yeah, That's I'm what I'm thinking, thinking, right? Absolutely. And another thing that you have to factor in is the use of social media and how it promotes this kind of things. Um, kids see it they think it's cool i mean back in our time and i mean i don't want to sound old but back in the days when i was in high school it was more like you you know just with your friends and just you know people talking about it so if you didn't have access you didn't know i didn't know about a lot of these things but now with social media instagram facebook there's accessibility more than ever and it's just making it more of a problem and it's not something that we can avoid not to talk about anymore Wow. Wow. Okay. All right. So what are they really using, right? What are the common things, right? So like in the United States, like around us, what are people using? So what should parents that like so put their eyes out there, you know, trying to figure out what they're doing? Yeah. So overall, the actual, the biggest problem is it starts as something small as cigarette smoking. About four in 10 high schoolers are smokers. They buy cigarettes and from then it usually progresses onto other things. Uh, but mainly the bigger things are marijuana, alcohol, and now there's a big influence of heroin and stuff, uh, methamphetamine. All of those things are easier to access than you think. So 
and then, and then pills, prescription pills, opioids, um, those are the big problems now. So the top three that I, uh, well, actually, I'll tell you the top four that I have started seeing is definitely marijuana being one of the bigger things. Usually they use co-use marijuana with other things. So marijuana, alcohol, uh, methamphetamine, and opioids. Those are things that are ev easily available. They're easy. They're conspicuous. So parents and they may not you know they may not notice it like i think there's some e-cigarettes that do have stuff like that or am i wrong because i think you know yeah. those e-cigarettes i feel like people think they look so cool like when it's just like when smoking came out like ooh, looking cool right now it's the e-cigarette and my kids tell me oh a lot of high schoolers they use juice what's the big like not what's the big deal but yeah they think it's not a big deal to us to me it's a big deal so but will that be like will, can they like use like the here, whatever, <laughs> any of the substances in the e-juices. Yeah, they can use, the kids are very creative. They obscure, you know, the smells and, you know, stuff with a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, that's why e cigs is actually banned in most states because they have, they come under this disguise of just being flavored and, you know, so, but there's the content of nicotine was actually so large that it was causing more problems and the way of inhalation it was causing long problems so a lot of the ceos and stuff stepped down because they couldn't um they couldn't vouch for the product and realize that it was actually causing more problems and helping what they thought it would okay i'm thankful that in the in part of the united states it is banned but you know well the whole world right people see that people doing things over here then they're like oh let's try it and and actually i've seen people that are close to me and i'm like come on man this is it, it's not as it's not it has more harm than benefit these people don't smoke but they do the juice because they feel it looks cool so yeah. it's just really sad that's what I think. Anyway, okay, so <laughs> we know what we know what the statistics is, right? We know what they're possibly doing. Um, well, how do we know? Like, how what are the signs and symptoms for parents to look out for to know if their kids are using this stuff? So again, it's very like kids are really, really good. They're creative. There's a lot of ways things can be hidden. But um, I've worked in a lot of behavioral centers with little kids ranging from anywhere from, I'm, I had a kid as young as five years old using these things, you know. So one of the biggest things is personality changes. As parents, if you know your kids, you're paying attention to them, you can start to see that their personalities change. And maybe a kid that's usually outgoing is now spending more time in his room, different, you know, there's changing crowds that they're hanging out with you, you know, just, and then parent intuition that something's not right something's wrong here so just cueing to the child the behavior of the child is one of the most important things because they're not really gonna show a lot of symptoms until like it's starting to become a problem and that, that takes a while for that to be noticeable if you're not really paying attention so a lot of kids actually end up getting into trouble before their parents discover they have this problem with dr drugs and alcohol or anything Okay, so what I just heard is like just behavior, just subtle behavioral changes is what you should look out for, right? Yes, they're irritable, they're uh, getting angry at little things, they're, you know, maybe laughing. Come on now, we're talking about teenagers. <laughs> That's why it's easy to be masked because... <laughs> but it, it goes a long way just to saying hey are you okay like what's going on and just really taking time to talk to them because eventually when it gets too much they will talk half of the problems that I hear talking to them is that they don't have anybody really checking in on them they don't feel like people care so a lot of that or they're trying to impress their friends it's stuff like that that we really really need to pay attention to and because like you said, teenagers are irritable. They don't want to talk to you. But like, I, again, one of my youngest ones, five, six, I've seen them start as early. They get, you know, usually also their parents or people they're around guardians, they're using it. So they have access that way. And they may be sneaking around seeing that you're doing it. I mean, if you pay enough attention, you will know. Okay, good. Thank you. So what are the, are there any actionable steps like guardians to take if you suspect that your child is abusing? Like, yeah. I'm sure so, you don't want to go and like, ah, you're screaming, how are you, how do you, you blah, blah, blah. You don't want to go crazy, right? So what is the calm way? What is the way to do it? <laughs> a lot of parents actually struggle with this. Um, one of, I remember a story of a girl who 
we saw, um, and she, you know, she started using, um, she had had some problems with her friend and, you know, was started having, you know, the drugs and stuff and started using. And her mom found her diary and was like crying and came in and, you know, so the, when we asked the daughter, like, is there anything like your mom could have done? Basically, she was saying that she would have loved if her mom like paid more attention to her talk to her she said her mom would buy her all the iphones and you know things materialistic things but she really just would appreciate it her mom listening more asking her questions being more involved so for parents i know it's not easy but being involved and taking time out to say hey checking in on your kids are you okay how's your mental health how are your friends tell me what's new you know asking kids questions really go a long way you know my thing, my my kids think I'm a mother hen. Like, don't I have anything else better to do? <laughs> I'm, I'm bugging them. Oh, tell me about you can't do this or you can't. The other parents let their kids do that. Why can't you let me do it? <laughs> so I feel good. Thank you for that. All right. So so basically, like actionable steps is if you see your kid doing this, is just go talk to them. Is that what you're saying? biggest thing is talking to the kid figuring out if there's a problem what they feel about the problem we often try to just start you know implementing actions you know and saying oh we gotta fix it telling everybody screaming being frantic but the number one thing just like you know i know we're both in the nursing field is assessing doing assessment asking questions figuring out where did it start how did it start what can we do and then then start trying to figure out how you can help them there's a lot of outlines there's a lot of resources available for the community there's counseling centers there's family therapy there's a lot of steps that you can do but the biggest thing is figure out where the problem's coming from so you can see how to address the problem some kids are just in the starting phases of it where they're just introduced they think it's cool they haven't really done much they don't know whether they're coming or going and some kids are far so you have to determine first where your kid is at so you can know where to help them i work in um treatment centers and day programs and uh, alternative schools for those kids there's all these things that are available, but again, you have to know specifically what your kid needs before you can take the next step. Okay, very good. Thank you. So I'm just, I, I like to repeat to make sure I got it. And I'm sure you guys need mental health. You guys do that a lot, right? So it's just basically talk, talk calmly, figure out what is going on, try to understand where they're coming from and what led to it. And so possibly you can get into a solution, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. I got it. Okay. I just- <laughs> Yeah, so I think you've kind of talked about it because I was thinking, hmm, peer pressure must have a lot to play with this in this because you're talking social media, right? Friends, the people you hang out with, right? Yeah. Usually that's how it starts. Honestly, a lot of this kids start because their friends are, you know, hey, I got this thing, it makes us cool. Don't you want to be cool like us? Let's try it. You know, some kids actually start because their parents do it. Um, I remember one of, I used to work with uh, pregnant teenagers and I, w- I was uncomfortable with it because of my biases initially. But one of the, I would never forget one of the stories of a girl who, I told me that she actually started using because her dad started her using it. Um, so my whole thing just changed and needing to understand and putting my judgments aside, you know, of her and realizing that there's different genesis of these things becoming a problem. So yes, again, just peer pressure is real and understanding like why, the why is who and why. Yeah, so there was, I think I watched a video about some Somali American kids and the parents, like in the community, they don't like to talk about it. Like, like it's a lot of immigrant communities. We don't like to face the problem that, yes, our kids could be using this thing, right? And so I'm just thinking in some cultures, sometimes I was, actually my mom too told me like in some Arab cultures, they just put these things on, they offer it like it's not a big deal. And like hashish, and I don't know what that is in there, but... <laughs> What 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 do you think about that? What do you have to say about that? And is it more common that I, than what we think, right? Yes, it's very common. It's even common within the Nigerian communities for parents to be oblivious. The Somali community actually, um, Rochester, Minnesota, where I'm, I'm based, is full of Somali communities. And I've actually 
had the privilege of working with Somali teenagers where with drug and alcohol substance use, you know, and they have a big Muslim thing within them too. So they take for granted that their kids are not using. But one of the Somali kids told me that they cocaine is a big deal with them now. They use a lot of cocaine with the teenagers and that he said, we could be using, and my mom would come and it would, she would just wipe the table thinking it was powder and not what? thinking anything. So I was like, wow, it is that bad. So there's definitely education that's needed for the parents. We say, God, 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 but realize that these kids have issues and this is what they're doing now. It's, this is 2020. Wow. So how are they using Is it injection or snuffing? A lot of them are snuffing, they're eating. Um, so uh, marijuana, you can either eat. The biggest thing is a lot of them try to do it where it's conspicuous. They put it in drinks, they um, drink cough medicine, they, you know, snort it. Any way you think that, you know, the smoking, so most of the substances are actually like uh, odorless. So you're not going to be able to tell um initially i mean so it's a it's a lot of methods like i've heard stuff i'm not gonna even repeat here about how these kids are doing it well well i'm just like like i'm flapping i'm just so like like, the mom will wipe up the table thinking it was powder yeah we're so like we just we always think oh no not my kid but we just need to start thinking maybe my kid and if it's my kid what are we what are we gonna do about it um yeah the boys and the girls the girls are even getting almost worse than the boys now so it's not like oh she's a girl she's not gonna do that no that's a fault that's false um you know it's anybody that's human that's able to you know get to try to solve their problems using numbing methods and we just Mm. need to have ability of having issues that's the big one solve problems non- through numbing and um prepare pressure um just going with the flow that's the scary thing about teenagers because most of them go with the flow yes and media is a big thing. media is a big thing that we we joke some of the songs i listen to some of the songs i listen to as a teenager and i hear them now and i'm like wow that was a drug reference oh okay that was a drug reference and nowadays it's even more like now that I work in the substance field and learning there's a lot of references to drugs and clothes and like the media and you know like a lot of songs even Nigerian songs like science student that song that everybody sings and whatever it's about drugs it's you know so we have to be careful because these kids are getting messages from all over that it's acceptable when it's not Okay, alrighty. I re- I can keep going. I can keep talking and talking and talking. Like, oh my gosh, open my eyes to all this. It's so scary. Oh my gosh. Alrighty. So, is there a way we can prevent this? Like, how can I? How can we prevent? How can I prevent my child? You know, <laughs> it's, it's about me now. How can we prevent our children from abusing substances? So the biggest thing, like I uh, said, primary prevention is education. There's, it's, you can't stress that enough. You have to educate them um, about, you can't act like because we're not talking about these problems, it's not existing, it's not going on. We have to, you know, talk to them. We like, hey, we know what's, you know, this is a possibility. Just want to be aware that we know so that if you have any problems, you're running into issues before somebody offers you anything, you can come to me and talk to me about it first. So again, you know, the education's at school. I remember when I was in school, there was a D.A.R.E. program. This is your brain. This is your brain on drugs. And then they slash an egg to show you the kind of problems that, you know, um, can happen with drug use. And I think we've gone away from that because we think it's too cliche, but it did work. Um, and it, it, it does work. Education works. Being mad, matter of fact, hey, if you use drugs, this is what's going to happen. Your quality of life is going to become lower. It's going to affect jobs, education. I mean, it's all over. One of my most memorable team, um, person that I saw was this um, Ghanaian kid who came here. He was good, but started having problems with, you know, trying to cross over between culture and, you know, American culture. And he was introduced to heroin and it changed the course of his life. He started shooting up the drugs and he's all confused, treatment center, jail. And, you know, his parents are threatening to send him back. But it's like, I 
you know, I just was trying to solve my problems and now I'm in too deep. So again, education, I, I, I can't stress that enough. Not acting like these kids don't know. Children know. Children talk amongst each other. So if you'd be surprised how much your kids know. So maybe, you know, when you talk to your kid and your kid says, I have a problem to his friend, his friend can be like, well, my mom did say, you know, this, these are the options. And it goes a long way. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so we, we've kind of talked a lot, a lot today about a lot of things. And um, I'm, thank you for opening my eyes because, <laughs> whew, yes, and I'm sure a lot of parents will be thanking you too. So I appreciate that. What is one thing that you want to make sure that we all take away from today's discussion? If we don't, even if we kind of skim the rest, right? What is the one thing you want to make sure we take away today? This is, uh, so you said at the beginning that this is a very important topic. It's something that we shouldn't take lightly. It's a problem that's growing and it's a problem that will continue to grow. So one thing if I could impact is the fact that um, knowledge is key and substance abuse is a problem that's here to stay. So we should definitely do what we can do to educate ourselves about the signs, the symptoms, and what to do to prevent you know, because it's better to prevent than to try to cure the problem. So yeah, I think that's, that's the biggest. Absolutely. That's like my thing. I'd rather prevent it than cure it. And that's most of the things I do, prevention rather than curing. Um, so thank you so much. Is there a way people can get a hold of you after the show if they had any questions? concerns <laughs> a lot of concerns. <laughs> yes. I mean, my, um, my email address is my first name, A-S-I-S-A-T-1414 at gmail.com. Also, you can find me on Instagram, um, which is a platform for mental health in, um, in the African community. It's mind, spelled with a Y-M-Y-N-D underscore culture. Um, we started it to, with a friend of mine who's also African to bring awareness to the mental issues that we face as Africans. We've been busy because of school and stuff and finishing up, so we haven't really been up to date as we should, but we're going to get back to get bringing you guys more information in all areas of mental health. Including Let me make sure I got that. Um, um, that is the at sign, then M-Y-N-D, culture, right? Mind, M-Y-N-D, underscore culture. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, do you like do things like counseling and things of that nature, like on the side for like kids <laughs> anywhere in the, in the country, in the world kind of thing? I started my platform, but I'm eventually looking to um, incorporate, you know, stuff like that. Just being available, mentorship programs for kids to be available and talk to them. One of the biggest needs kids have when they're facing problems and contributing to the huge substance um, abuse problems now in youth is the fact that they really don't have people they feel like they can go to. These kids have problems, they're lonely, they go to their friend who also hasn't figured it out. You know, so like just, it's really just about being the person you needed when you were growing up. And this is gonna solve a lot of problems. One of the things is that also, Mental health of these kids is the biggest thing that plays a role in substance use disorders, family genetics, a lot of factors. They're struggling. And to understand they're struggling is to understand the problem. 95% of the people, the population that I serve with substance use actually have a co-occurring mental health disorder. Uh, depression, anxiety, and stuff like that. So maybe we can figure out if that's what's causing the problem and contributing to the problem rather than just saying, hey, you have substance use problem and just going from there. There's, it's multifaceted, multi-layered, and it's important for us to, you know, try to understand all the facets of the problem and take care of it. Okay. Thank you so much. That was really, really helpful. Yeah, because I'm, I'm having like lots of things going through my mind right now. Like, whoa, thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate you, as you said. I um, hope you have a wonderful day. Guys, I learned a lot today. My eyes totally open. I hope you also learn a lot and you could take one or two pointers from here. Don't be that parent who sees powder on the table and think it's just dusting powder or baby powder or something. So please don't be ignorant. You, I, we hope our kids are not doing it, but we, need, we hope they are not doing it, but we have to be realistic and just if, if they are, let, let's deal with it. Let's get to the root of this problem. So thank you so much, Asisat. It was a pleasure having you here. Have a wonderful day. All right.
Thank you too. It was a pleasure. Join our Wellness Search Facebook community so that you can implement what we learn together. I am because you are. Thank you for listening and sharing your precious time with us. If you enjoyed the show, then follow us and subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, or any app that carries podcasts. Have an awesome week. Best Best wishes wishes to see see you thrive. thrive.